Welcome to the SCP Foundation. I am 05-4 and today you will be briefed on SCP-040. Let's go ahead and get into it. Item number SCP-040, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-040 is to be contained in a standard humanoid containment module within Bio Research Area 12. The chamber is to be connected to an airborne tranquilizer dispersal system to be activated in the event of SCP-040 manifesting its properties outside of testing environments. The chamber is to be observed by two supervisory personnel at all times. Recreational items such as toys, games, and art supplies may be provided to SCP-040 at the discretion of supervisory personnel. As they have been determined to pose no possible threat, SCP-040, TAC-1 Alpha, SCP-040, TAC-1 Charlie, and SCP-040, TAC-1 Juliet, have been approved to remain in the containment chamber with SCP-040 for purposes of the subject's mental well-being. Security Chief Special Order 392 TAC-5, date redacted. All other entities modified by SCP-040 are to be disposed of after recovery and study according to standard biological specimen clearance protocols as outlined in document CDP-BIO-N1. No outside organisms are to be brought into SCP-040's presence beyond those used in testing procedures. SCP-040 is to undergo daily school lessons and bi-weekly psychological review overseen by Drs. Habernathy, Logan, and Izawa. Description. SCP-040 is a Caucasian female of approximately 8 years of age, standing 1 meter in height. SCP-040 bears numerous physical abnormalities. The subject's skin is highly sensitive to light and easily damaged by physical contact. And the subject's hair is a bright pink in coloration. This hair is brittle and falls out easily. The subject displays green slash yellow heterochromia with the sclera of the left eye black in coloration. SCP-040 has no sight in this eye. SCP-040's emotional state is within acceptable boundaries for an individual of its age group, accounting for the effects of prolonged containment and physical abnormalities. Subject's intelligence is slightly above average for its age group, and display behavior is generally cooperative. Of note is SCP-040's quick acclimatization to containment, believed to be resultant of its upbringing before recovery. SCP-040 is capable of manipulating living matter, mutating and modifying existing organisms in order to create new ones, collectively referred to as SCP-040-1. This effect is at will, but requires significant focus and time to enact, and becomes increasingly unreliable and inaccurate when manipulating details through small-scale modifications. SCP-040 is incapable of altering microscopic organisms and has great difficulty in altering plant life. Dead organic matter may also be used, but must be used in conjunction with a living organism. Instances of SCP-040-1 will not demonstrate pre-modification behavior. The majority will act similar to domesticated house pets, generally with extreme loyalty to SCP-040, regardless of prior association. The appearance of SCP-040-1 instances will vary. Some instances will retain overall pre-modification form with some alteration, such as SCP-040's apparent modification to itself, though the majority will bear no resemblance to their original appearances. SCP-040 appears incapable of manipulating instances of SCP-040 TAC-1 more than once. Recovery Log Subject was recovered on date redacted in redacted. SCP-040 was one of 15 subjects taken into custody. Further investigation found no anomalous properties in any other individuals. Amnestics were administered to detainees and the general populace, and cover-up measures were enacted without further incident. Monitoring of the area is ongoing in order to detect any resurgence of redacted. Addendum 01. SCP-040 is currently allowed custody of the following SCP-040 TAC-1 instances. SCP-040 TAC-1 Alpha, a polymorphic symbiotic organism capable of changing size, shape, color, and texture in reaction to its environment. Subject serves as outer clothing, similar to a jacket or sweater, and absorbs nutrients from SCP-040's bloodstream. 
Subject was recovered alongside SCP-040, and genetic testing reveals that the subject shares the majority of its genetic makeup with the common house cat, Felis catus. SCP-040, TAC-1, Charlie. A spherical organism capable of flight by means of rubbery bladders filled with helium. Entity has 11 limbs terminating in opposable digits and a complex respiratory system capable of replicating a wide variety of musical patterns. SCP-040, TAC-1, Juliet. A quadrupedal organism covered in a thick coat of pink and blue fur. Entity has no eyes, a broad mouth with blunt teeth, and is capable of climbing up vertical surfaces. Occasionally used by SCP-040 as a mode of transportation. Addendum 02. The following excerpt is from an interview carried out on date redacted, three weeks after initial containment. Dr. Habernathy. Good morning, 40. SCP-040. Good morning, Miss Habernathy. Doctor, it's good to see you're getting over your cold. 40. Mm-hmm. Doctor, can I ask you a few questions before we start with today's lessons? 40. Yeah. Doctor. Can you tell me about your parents? 40. Mr. Green said that I don't have any. Doctor. Can you tell me about Mr. Green then? 40. He was nice, but he wasn't very good at talking. He would, would, would uh, always talk like, like this. But he wasn't there a lot of the time. Most of the time, it was the nurses looking after us. Doctor. And what did they do for you? 40. They'd play games with us and teach us things, and sometimes they would make us wear these dumb helmets and sit quiet for a long time. Sometimes they'd put a movie on for us if we behaved, but if we were bad, they would lock us in our rooms. Doctor, can you tell me anything else? 40. Mmm, they always served us peas for dinner, and I hate peas, so I always gave mine to five, because she likes peas. But I think green beans are better. Addendum 03. On date redacted, SCP-040 successfully reanimated a deceased human body during testing using three specimens of brown rat, Ratus norvegicus, as the required living component. Resultant subject retained no memories of previous life and was judged to be of the approximate mental capacity of a human toddler. SCP-040 was highly distressed by the event and refused further testing for the next three weeks. And I don't really blame her. That concludes your briefing on SCP-040. You are to be joining Drs. Habernathy, Logan, and Izawa in researching SCP-040, as well as trying to find out who did this to her. Under no circumstances are you or any other researcher to attempt to recreate this particular anomaly. Remember, we secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they may live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.